More exciting is Maya Holiday, CEO and founder of Mangrove Web. Okay, wow. Are you like super picky when it comes to websites? I mean, I I have a lot of opinions about websites. I've been doing this for about 20 years now, but um I also understand that a lot of people are at different moments in their website journey and have different ways of communicating and I want to be really realistic about like that the assets that everyone is is using and some you know you, this is your platform and so you're you're doing what you're doing in a really successful way via your podcast and everyone's website could could always be better but um I also like to just say you should you know start from where you are so I don't Wait. I love that level of grace that you're giving everybody <laughs> because you know I think I think in, in life, and, and this is like human nature, that when you're frustrated and you're frustrated because there's a lot of unknown and lack of control, mm -hmm. it's really easy to disengage yeah. and to say, oh, we'll, we'll get to that, right? Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I don't know if you see that. I mean, if it's, you know, I, I said the word, you know, the words human nature, but it just seems like it's, um, we're on the web all all the time i mean morning noon and night our kids are our parents are our, our co-workers and so it is kind of the, the the ecosystem with which we we all become equal in many ways yeah um i think it is easy to get overwhelmed with thinking about what your website should be doing or how it should be serving your organization and um Part of it is that like doing a website redevelopment ends up often being kind of a, a soul searching effort for organizations. And part of what's really important is that there is that strategic planning um, in advance of doing the website. And then there's strategic planning in the early stages of actually doing the website. And so there's there's moments in which someone comes, um, organizations come to us and they start working on their website and realize there's actually a lot of other bigger questions to answer about mm -hmm. their purpose and their mission and their goals. And, and if those things aren't clear, like we're, we're identifying those in a very specific capacity for the website and how they can leverage their dig digital presence. But if there's a lot of open-ended questions about where the organization is, especially if there's disparate opinions of different people mm -hmm. on the board or on the staff, um, that's when we realize like there's you know, there's there's work that needs to be done to kind of get up to that point. But it's also such a, a you know, moment of grand potential of reestablishing those things. Like there's there's definitely a bit of an identity crisis that I've seen through the website process. But it's also moving, you know, moving forward and really putting those things into action and putting them out into the world. And that's why sometimes it feels really overwhelming. So I think it's really important to work with a team that can help your whole, all of the stakeholders within your organization move through that process and kind of get aligned and be able to um, all feel good about the direction it's going. I love that you said that. And, and I think this is a fascinating thing is you talk about, and you briefly mentioned this, a website strategic plan. And this is the time of year in the nonprofit sector. A lot of folks are dealing with their, you know, the, the finishing of their strategic plans mm -hmm. moving forward. I have rarely heard of a strategic plan in the context of a website, but I got to say, I love it because I, I can understand what that might look like, but what does it really look like to you? And how do you, how do you suggest we, we you know, move through this? Yeah. So doing a um, website strategic plan is, you know, actually the first part of what we do together as an organization. So if we're working on the project, we're actually working with an organization to dive into what's important to the organization, where you are now, where you're going, what the objectives are for this year and the years to come. And then um, we work through all those steps with you in service of creating the website that satisfies your objectives and then also reviews who your audiences are, make sure that we're speaking to all of the different stakeholders and we're connecting to them. We're creating stories that resonate, that are compelling to um, people who want to get engaged on many different levels. And then um, 
you know, part of that process is also going through content strategy. And so thinking mm -hmm. through in a more structural way, kind of almost like a blueprint of your content. Like what do you, what are the stories that need to be told? What are the areas of the organization that need to be explained to the person who's interacting for the first time to the person who went to a, an event and then is coming to see what your impact is or kind of validate the organization to someone who has been involved for 10 years but wants to share it with a friend and wants to show the inner workings of a program that that you've rolled out and the impact of that program. So what are all the different touch points that will, you know, communicate to these different audiences, like what's what's valuable to move the organization forward. And then, so, you know, we outline that content strategy. Also, if we're rebuilding a site, we're going to go through the current information and say, what's still relevant here? What yeah. needs to be Lovely. like housekeeping? Um, I think of it like moving from, um, you know, 2000 square foot house to a smaller minimalist, house right mm -hmm. what what actually needs to be moved what serves you um it's hard to let go of things but it also forces you to focus on what's important and so mm -hmm. we go through kind of an audit of what exists and then um we also just you know do some technical planning like what's what's helpful in terms of other systems you're using like mm -hmm. crms or donation platforms um right you know, how can we, I come from more of a coding perspective. And so I always like to think of how can we streamline data? How can we make sure that anything that anyone that's coming through your site and interacting with your site, you know, the simple things like connect to your newsletter to maybe creating a donation that's earmarked right. for a certain area of um, the business and then making sure that they get updates about that program or that theme, you know, through your marketing platform or something. So, um, okay. So I gotta, I gotta stop because yeah, sorry, there's a lot gotta, to go into. No, I gotta, well, this is why I'm going to ask this question. I got to imagine that a lot of folks are like, I don't have time to give you all that information. I just want a pretty website that works mm -hmm. because the lot of the questions that you're asking are questions that are not just about the website. They're about the business. Yep. And I've got to believe that there are organizations that are like, oh, wait, whoa, you know, like maybe they don't all align or they don't all agree. Like people from development might say one thing versus people mm -hmm. from programming. How do you and your team or should any of us think about that and work yeah. through that? Because this is a pretty heavy lift, right? It it is and i mean a lot of um a lot of our work is about listening and synthesizing different opinions and also making sure that they're aligned to what serves the organization and so in the early stages of this strategic planning you know we try to gather as much information that exists and is relevant to where the organization is now and in you know when when an organization has done a decent amount of this work or, you know, usually there's something to work with, right? And so we we do kind of an audit of what already exists. And then we also do stakeholder interviews with, um, you know, donors or partners or any other users on the site. Um, we talk to different people in the organization, and then we're really coming in to synthesize that information with our expertise and be able to say, this is what we see that will serve your users, your um, internal team, and you know the this is how the project can be a success. And then it's not as much, you know, there are a lot of different opinions and sometimes different views that are coming into play, but there's often a thread of what's clear in terms of how the website can be successful that is a different angle than a lot of people are thinking about the site. So a lot of times if someone, you know, we and we do this through the, the content process, through the design process, um, it's easier sometimes to think of it as like the design feedback where we mm -hmm. might be making, we're, we're always making design decisions that are based on the goals of the organization and the, the strategic plan of the website. However, um, it's not uncommon for two people to have different thoughts and feelings and responses <laughs> to different aesthetic 
um, you know, versions of the website or to have like a, a, a reaction that's more about what their personal preferences are. And so we try to always map that back to, okay, this, we want you to love your website. We want you to, yeah. you know, think it's fantastic and to right. be delighted when you see it and, and we want it to resonate, but we also need it to serve its purpose, which is X, Y, Z, which is to inform your audiences, which is to solicit donations, which is to make, mm -hmm. you know, connections or validate what you're doing. And so if, if we're not holding the line of, you know, your preferences in conjunction, and when I say your, it's maybe 10 different people that have an opinion about it in conjunction with the end result and the, the end user experience and what serves the organization, then, you know, we're not, we're not doing our job if we're not holding both of those things and making sure everyone remembers this isn't about what you like. This is about how this project is successful and how it supports your organization. And usually, you know, the ways in which the web website can support the organization is actually, you know, more, more agreed upon and more rallied around than some of the nuances of, you know, the other, the other pieces, the other, the design elements or, um, you know, which pieces are more highlighted than others. And so we can usually, if, as long as we're mapping it back to what the uh, more concrete goals are, we can, we can create, we can find that alignment. Yeah. You know, I love that. And I, I think that you said something really magical as, as we move on to this next layer of, of this mm -hmm. discussion. Um, and that is, you know, understanding the goals. And I loved what you said. You, you know, it's human nature to be able to like, to say, oh, I don't like that. But then to be able to articulate, well, why don't you like that? Right. Super hard. I mean, yeah. super hard. And so then it becomes like a judgmental thing. But I want to go to a different area, which I think a lot of us, we think of our website as a visual communicator and it's like the graphics, mm -hmm. you know, is it pretty or not? Do we like it or not? But talk to us and educate us about accessibility, because I think this is one of those things that we're not, we don't understand enough. And so I'm really hoping yeah. you can help us to understand what this concept even is. Yeah, absolutely. So Website accessibility is basically the way in which users that have different um, abilities are able to interact with your site. And so um, users who have a different range of um, physical or cognitive abilities may use different tools in order to interact with the, the website. And so website accessibility just ensures that there's a really wide range of usability on your site, um, both from just like a sort of inclusive design perspective of the way you design to appeal to a wide audience and from a more nuanced like back end uh, under the hood settings that allow people who use different tools to interact with the site. And so, um, wow. So what that means in practice is, is there's, there's a set of guidelines that you can think of that are in similar to like ADA guidelines for businesses or sorry, okay. for buildings. Um, and so there's a set of requirements that are called the um, website content accessibility guidelines that are WCAG and there's level A, double A, triple A. And so it's, there's different lists that, that help, um, help developers and designers understand and, and content creators how to um, how to create sites that are that are more inclusive and more accessible. And so user some users with disabilities will use things like voiceover tools or um, uh, assistive keyboard tools. And so we build in on the back end, we build in um, ways to connect to those tools. So someone using those assistive technologies can move through the site with less friction and be able to get through the website. So one really concrete example is like, um, if someone using a keyboard strokes or voiceover tools to move through the site, we have like a skip to content button that's, that's hidden to users that are visually like looking at the site, but if it's turned on, you can skip the navigation so that every time you hit a new page, you're not tabbing through and hearing and, and waiting for the tools to go through every single navigation oh, in a content. And so I love that. 
I love, love, love that. Yeah. Okay. And it's really important for nonprofits because there's actually, especially if you're getting any state or government funding, um, there's the laws are changing around like how your website needs to be accessible. I know that I'm in California. I know that in California, there are already laws in place for like universities and other state funded initiatives where the website has to be WCAG level AA compliant. And so there's actually, and a lot of the RFPs we're seeing like have that written into it now. Now. But the, the really interesting thing about it is like, you know, there's like kind of a fear factor of like the legal compliance, but there's also this like beauty in it of just actually building to a more inclusive audience. Like one in five Americans has a disability. It's, um, more, you know, not, not everyone necessarily is using these like screen reader tools, but there's sure. aging audiences who need to be able to um, zoom in on on something or who needs specific, you know, where specific um, color contrast will help everyone will help if you're sitting outside and there's a glare, it will help you see better, you know, so there's this kind of, we call it graceful degradation in um, technology where it, it building sites to a higher level of accessibility is helps very specific audience, but it also you know, there's fallbacks where it actually helps a, a much wider audience and it just creates like more inclusivity and you still come out with a really good site. And there's a lot of overlaps with just basic UX um, best practices and SEO best practices and um, kind of just like streamlining things for a multitude of purposes um, by, you know, by thinking about accessibility. I love that you brought this up. And I think if anybody needed um, a push, <laughs> you also said something magical. And that is, this is in, in engage, being engaged and being demanded by funders and mm -hmm. financial partners. Um, yeah. And so, yeah. Uh, and I love also that you aligned it to the ADA because nonprofits can relate to that. I mean, nonprofits that are like working in, on campuses or, or have program centers. They can be like, oh, yeah, I, I get what that means. So taking that mentality and putting this forward um, is super genius. You know, I could talk to you all day, but our time's running out. And I yeah, I want to I want to kind of come back to something we touched on lightly. Um, mm -hmm. But that's the connection between the website and marketing and how we look at this. I mean, do you see this as something that it should reflect, you know, all the other marketing elements that we're using, or do you see the website as its own standalone? It can have different color scoping. It can have different, you know, fonts. I mean, yeah. how, how, how should we also be thinking about this? I mean, usually if you're redoing your website, then it's, it becomes kind of the cornerstone for then building out other marketing assets and also um, the way in which you speak about and represent your organization across the board. And you want that consistency because you want the visual brand recognition and also the, the, you know, the way you speak about your organization to feel similar. And so in the website process, a lot of times we create like a voice and tone document in, in addition to brand guidelines. And so I usually we share those, those elements and then that can be, used by anyone else in the organization to create other like social media assets or to create, mm -hmm. you know, other things. And so, you know, you want them all to weave together. Um, and usually, but usually the website is the first piece and then you start rolling out the other pieces, but you, you know, you want them to be related. And, and usually we try to give tools if we're not doing more of the traditional marketing rollout we don't do marketing but sometimes we'll create like social media templates or email templates or things like that or we'll just share those base level assets so that someone in the organization who has the skills to do that can use those so um yeah and you you want them to reference each other and you you want them to build on each other if you're posting something on linkedin and then it links back to your site you want someone to feel like they're still within the same realm yeah. Exactly. Um, and again, I, I think that it's it's uh, really intelligent to go all the way back to the beginning of our conversation. It's that strategy. It's mm -hmm. not just one thing. You've got to be looking at all these different tools together so that they all support, you know, and, and, and help you navigate through to your goal. Yeah. This is one of my favorite um, questions that I ask folks that come on the nonprofit show a lot. 
And basically, how do we know when it's working? You know, I, I think that we can invest so much time and money and mental energy on a website. But then the reality is, how do we know? How do we know and what should we be looking at so we can know if this is working, if this has been a good investment? Yeah, that's a great question. That actually allows me to round out the last point in the strategy, which is you want to figure out what your KPIs are. You want to figure out what, what um, you want to ask the question when we're going through the strategy, what would make this a success? And there's, there's different ways to establish these metrics and measure the success of the project. And then you want to have analytics so you can continue to look at it. But the, the elements that you might include in that are like, you know, traffic on the site or time on each page or, you know, online donations or inquiries that are uh, converting in a certain way or something like each of those elements. Um, another, so usually in the beginning of a project, we're, we're talking about those and we're trying to, um, you know, writing them into the strategic brief so that we can have that benchmark. And then there's different tools like analytics and different heat maps and things that we can measure that that information, that feedback loop. Um, but the other thing that's a little, it's a little bit less quantifiable, but is something that's always really important to me, especially in nonprofits, because I actually started doing websites while I was working in a small nonprofit in San Francisco in 2005. And um, I'm keenly aware of the um, the nonprofit experience of having like different people touching different things and many people wearing many hats and maybe yeah. interns managing content on the website and this, that, and the other. And so for me, there's also a factor of what's the, the user experience of the organization on the back end and how, how can mm -hmm. that be easier? Um, how can we make sure that the website can be, you know, there's, there's new information that can be added to the website um, that's effective and that's easy to do, like, you know, and that might be more anecdotal of, yeah, like I was able to offload adding case studies to our new intern because we had a training manual that really clearly showed how to do that. Or um, right. it might be that, hey, every time someone fills out an inquiry now, it, stream, it goes straight into our, it's straight into a bloomerang or something. Yeah. And allows us then to be more strategic about our follow-ups because we have data from the contact form on the website. And so I want to see also, you know, it might not be the numbers necessarily of how, how people are interacting with the site specifically, but then what happens after they're interacting with the site or um, how are how are different systems linked together and made more efficient so that the organization can focus more on other work that needs to be done that that maybe they only they can do, um, you know, <laughs> and just make better use of of everyone's time and and yeah. brain power. I I love that you said. I, well, I love that you have this awareness because that's the reality of the nonprofit you know environment. Mm -hmm. um, and so I really I really love that you said that. And again, so much of this goes back to um, this the starting point of the strategic plan. And I just think um, it sounds to me, having spent this period of time with you, if you really invest in that up front, as you navigate these different choices, a lot of the answers to questions are going to be right there. Yeah. You're going to save yourself some time and just say, okay, well, look, we already talked about that. This is what we need to be focusing on or looking to achieve. And so um, yeah. what a great conversation. I, Maya Holiday, CEO and founder of Mangrove Web. Um, I've got to believe you being in California don't see a lot of mangroves? Or... I, I don't, but I actually started the organization when I was living in Panama, freelancing and traveling and have spent many, um, we have a very global team and um, my husband's Australian. I lived over there for a little while, saw mangroves there. So over the years, I've actually seen a lot of mangroves, but um, no, not in California. <laughs> not yet, right? <laughs> well, Maya Holiday, CEO, founder of Mangrove Web, check out her website. It's mangrove, M-A-N-G-R-O-V-E hyphen web.com. And you can learn more about 
what she and her team uh, value in, in terms of their process, what they do, what their, um, their ideas are and how they navigate um, clients. You know, I just think you said so many things that in so many ways we haven't heard before. We might think, oh yeah, we know this. Um, it's, it's intuitive, but we do these practices in other parts of our nonprofit management. And so to have you kind of bring it back into, um, you know, the web environment and the web space, which we must all be really looking at is I think our primary connector um, has been really great. I've so enjoyed having you talk with us and uh, it's really, really been fun. Again, check out mangrove web.com and you can learn more about Maya and her team and what they're doing. Another part of our team at the nonprofit show are our amazing sponsors and they include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Staffing Boutique, Your Part-Time Controller, 180 Management Group, Fundraising Academy at National University, JMT Consulting, and Nonprofit Tech Talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out. You know, Maya, um, I, you've given me so much to think about. I got a witness to you um, okay. as I choke myself up. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I think what you did, which is pretty magical um, today for me, is you gave me a new lens. So instead of just saying I like or I hate, which is a horrible way to approach any project or anything in your arsenal, is to say, okay, what can we do and how can we navigate it and the why? Yeah. And the where's why. the opportunity to make it work for you? What's the opportunity mm -hmm. to make it make something easier for you to make it connect? You know, it doesn't, I know websites can be really um, an overwhelming endeavor, mm -hmm. but it can also be really refreshing and exciting. And I think sometimes it's just about starting and knowing you have a good partner to work with who will lead you through. I think sometimes people forget that it's actually our jobs to help you create the website. And that once we all engage, like you have, you have to do work, sure, but we're also like moving you through the process mm -hmm. in a way that is, is, reasonable and achievable and um, gets you to the right place. Right. Well, this has been fabulous. And I think this also has been a great conversation to start a Monday because we have uh, this period of time where we are um, in, in the, the season of the nonprofit sector. And so um, we want to get these websites good to go and really working and performing for year end when things are so critical for us. So yeah. um, Maya Holiday, this has been wonderful. Maya, as we end every episode, we have we sign off with this mantra, and it goes like this: to stay well, mm -hmm. so you can do well. Thank you, everybody, for joining us with another episode of the Nonprofit Show. We're really excited about our new platform. We hope you are going to be liking it as well, and we'll see you back here for another episode. Mm -hmm.